Today on WSRH Extra, we dive into how COVID-19 has dominated the globe. Plus, we take a look at how this is affecting different generations. Also, we see how some Seminole Ridge students are sewing up some supplies. WSRH Extra starts, starts now. episode of WSRH Extra. I'm Rachel Clark. And I'm Ashley Pellicone. With the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, social distancing continues to be one of the many necessary precautions to ensure our safety. That's why today's episode is being broadcast from different parts of the internet. And while we have the luxury of coming to you from the safety of our homes, many healthcare professionals continue to risk their health to help battle this virus. WSRH Extra reporter Justin Backer takes us into the eyes of nurses in the epicenter of this worldwide pandemic. As COVID-19 continues its rapid spread across the United States, New York continues to be at the front lines of battling this deadly virus, as there is already over 113,000 confirmed cases in New York State alone, with that number continuing to rise. Our numbers are just doubling, tripling every day. I literally went into work on Monday, we had 47 confirmed cases, and by Wednesday we had 70. COVID-19 has drastically changed everyday life with the busy life in the big city coming to almost a complete stop. All the stores are closed, restaurants are basically empty, you have like one or two workers there. Nurses and doctors across New York are being drastically affected by the pandemic as well. It's a whole new work environment. It's definitely a change of pace. It's definitely a whole new safety concern. Many hospitals are being pushed to their limits in order to battle the rising number of infections. We are reaching capacity a lot quicker than usual. They are making conference rooms, they are making um, treatment rooms, all designated patient rooms instead, because um, there's just no more space for them. Efforts are being made to reduce the risk of infection for nurses and doctors. Anybody who's working near or with um, a positive COVID patient is required to wear an N95 mask, a face shield. It's like a headband that goes around, you wear a shield over your face. If you're not working specifically with those patients, you're just required to wear the mask. In a strange time full of uncertainty, doctors and nurses in New York and across the country are leading the charge in supporting the country during this difficult time. For WSRH Extra, I'm Justin Backer. COVID-19 continues to be a worldwide issue and many people have had to change their way of life. WSRH Extra reporter Hunter Wood shows us the struggles many families have had to overcome. Hi! COVID-19 has made immeasurable impacts on people across the globe as they are limited in their ability to leave the house. However, for some people, these orders look a bit different. Not be able to go anywhere. Not, Not be able, able to go anywhere. Car. Not going to anywhere. No, can't go anywhere. Can't go to the store. Can't go to church. Can't be with family. These orders have had the same effect on a vast majority of the older generation, but they aren't the only ones making changes as many of their families have adapted to being their daily providers. When I'm looking at bringing in groceries, I offer to get their groceries for them so that they don't, they don't have to go out to the store. So I've been shopping for them and then delivering them at their door. Even though these unprecedented times have made being with their family much harder, the Hetchers have started trying new ways to be together while adhering to all social distancing guidelines. So we kind of sit in our swing in the front yard and they sit in their chairs by the fence line and we talk every night and we take walks every night after dinner. Social distancing of course. Well, I didn't see you out there today. Although many of these changes can be troublesome, Michelle says that all families should be taking these same precautions. I think it's very important at this time for families that have interactions with any older um, grandparents to be extra cautious at this time because it is our responsibility to help protect them from getting this virus. As the spread of COVID-19 continues to go to greater heights, families across the globe will continue to look for new ways to protect their loved ones while also providing a sense of normalcy. For WSRH Extra, I'm Hunter Wood. Every day, about 1.2 million surgical masks are used, resulting in a shortage. Some Seminole Ridge students are taking time out of their day to ensure the safety of those working the front lines. WSRH Extra reporter Brandon Domichetti shows us how these students are stitching their community together one mask at a time. 
I had some dental bibs laying around and they had a plastic coating and an absorbent side as well. I thought these would be great to make masks with. So I got my son and a few of his friends involved in making masks and we started doing it and just donating to the elderly and uh, people of publics, anyone who needed them. With the coronavirus affecting many areas around the world, some students and families from Seminole Ridge High School have decided to make many masks as a way to give back to their community. So we started making these masks to help out like with the community, like handouts to elderly people and like people of Publix, anyone who needed them. More and more people started needing the masks, so that's how more families got involved. Although the students have already made many masks through the donations from dentists, after receiving a call from Wellington Hospital saying that they are going to be short on masks, many more families became involved and have since produced thousands. In order to show their support, many of the families involved delivered the masks to the doctors and nurses at the Wellington Medical Center. These masks are just one way people across the nation are doing their part to help brave workers on the front lines. For WSRS Extra, I'm Brandon Damachetti. Due to the spread of COVID-19, seniors across the nation are missing out on some major milestones, one of them being prom. WSRH Extra reporter Riley Sullivan shows us what many seniors are doing in the midst of disappointment. As schools all across America close down due to COVID-19, many students are having to deal with emotions as they come to terms with a possible prom cancellation. When I found out that prom would basically not be happening on the date that we had already anticipated, I was initially really upset. I still am upset because it's senior prom. I feel so unlucky to lose my senior year, and especially prom. Like, I didn't go last year to my junior prom because I wanted to make this year so special, and I might not even be able to do that. Although the class of 2020 might not get the prom of their dreams, Many are choosing to keep their hopes high and plan to dress up in some way or another. So I thought it would be fun and at least sort of make up the experience for my family and my friends if I had everyone dress up for my birthday dinner in a black tie attire. Even popular social media apps such as TikTok have taken on the trend of dressing up during quarantine. Among all the craziness, American comedian Ellen DeGeneres has even created a hashtag called Ellen Prom to allow students to post their gorgeous prom outfits. Although this major milestone may be canceled, seniors are deciding to still make the most of it and wear their glamorous gowns. For WSRH Extra, I'm Riley Sullivan. Early last month, our TV Production Academy traveled to Washington, D.C. to compete in the biggest TV convention in the nation only to get sent home two days later. WSRH Extra reporter Emily Carbocci tells us more about how these students have handled heartbreak. Television production students from all over the nation have spent the entire school year preparing for the Student Television Network National Convention. As thousands of students arrive in Washington, D.C., they begin preparing for the competition ahead of them. Uh, we've been preparing since November, and we started heavily in uh, January. I was a week crazy eight, a week individual, a week crazy eight, a week individual, a week crazy eight till, till last week. Many students walked into the convention center with a fire in their eyes. However, with the coronavirus outbreak on the rise, the D.C. Department of Health painstakingly declared all conventions and meetings canceled. Nobody w wanted to cancel it, but due to the health concerns, uh, they felt that they needed to for the safety of the kids and um, the advisors. Many students said they were devastated. However, for seniors, this would have been the last chance they would ever get to compete. <laughs> this is everything. Um, I've been working at this for four years and just to have it taken away, like, it, it really, it's so surreal. As the heartache doles, many students and advisors begin wondering what will happen next. Uh, possibly doing it remotely down the road. I don't know how that would happen, but Honestly, it's a very fluid situation and they're just trying to, to handle it moment by moment at this time. Now that all students have arrived at home safely, we hope to see what STN has in store for us after the dust settles. For WSRH Extra, I'm Emily Carbocci. Thanks, Emily. Well, that's it for this episode of WSRH Extra. I'm Rachel Clark. And I'm Ashley Pellicone. We'd love to see what you're doing to help out your community, so don't forget to tweet us at Seminole Ridge TV.